well, Sunday we saw about faith, right? Of faith, of, of Bible called faith. Today we're gonna see how we grow in, uh, in our faith. It's important to understand first what is a Bible called faith. In that way, we can start the process to grow in our faith. So, God has given us means of grace to grow and a freedom of faith. Which one are these uh, means of, of grace? The word, pray, and somebody knows the term? Sacraments. Sacraments. That's right. Good, one point. <laughs> so when a person has uh, very little knowledge of God and His Word with the sacraments, with the means of grace, they can come to know them deeply. That's what happened with this. The one of weak faith comes to have a firm, firmer confidence. The one who has the private in desire and behavior now comes to display the character and conduct, and conduct of Christ. So we're gonna see these three points. We're gonna we're gonna see four and the meanings of grace. But at the end, we're gonna see how can we uh, apply this. So join me to the first one, and is um, the, the by the word of God. That is the first means of grace. <coughs> But I know that in this place, everyone believes that the Word of God is important, right? You believe that. That's why you're here. So otherwise, they, they, you would be here. So, but it's, it is a good to look at how we approach it. Because it's important, you know? Sometimes we spend many years in the Christian life, and it comes to uh, some kind of... Um, uh, it's the same. It usually can come to, uh, it can be a discipline, but it also can be uh, something to repeat and repeat, and, and, and with, with the time, we can lose, lost, uh, like the impression of the Bible. And sometimes we can approach to the Bible unconsciously and in a religious way. That's never happened to you. Sometimes when I, so many for many years, I, I I saw some books like, okay, I have to read it because it's the word of God, not because I like it. I'm, I am honest. Sometimes in the Old Testament, I saw okay, the prophet come and judge and I repent and and you know the number, the book of numbers, is that that's how it is. <laughs> and so. Uh, it's, it's sometimes it's like uh, I have to read it because you know I'm a Christian, well, so I have to. <laughs> so if sometimes we are promising the Bible in some way that is not good for us, but anyway we have to read it, right? So sometimes the people say for fear or complain with God. That's very common. The people just go to the Bible for because it's God, you know, and I have to do it, or oh, to score points and this hope for God's favor and protection. That's happened a lot. That's happened to me a lot. And sometimes I find myself like doing something, uh, pray, or I have to pray, I have to pray because, you know, maybe I needed something. <laughs> and that's happened, I mean, that's happened. And when I find myself doing this, oh, it's like, oh, I don't like it. It's like my wife come to me, and she have to talk to me because I'm his husband. I know when she talk to me in some way, uh, are you okay? <laughs> so, do you think that God know when we approach to the Bible in different way that how we have to do? It? And it's important because you approach the Bible in a good way, but the Holy Spirit is gonna show you, he's gonna teach us what is there? That's why it's important to everyone see how how we read the Bible. It's very important. So the second view 
there is a, a, two views. It's important to look at how the Bible looks today because there are so many opinions about it. But when, but they can be summarized in two. The first view is since an, an old book of full of historical data, but not very relevant for today. Who, who think this is this is the Bible? The unbeliever. You you read the Bible? Oh my! What do you read? Another more more actually book or something that you can use for today? And unfortunately, there are pastors who have the same opinion. I have one, like two. And it, and, it, and it was sad because they, they, this, when they preach, they reflect this. How? Well, when I remember the one pastor, I was uh, in his church. I went there for two, two, two times only. And he, he was preaching uh, for 30 minutes. And what, and what, what he says is, how to be a good person, how to be a good father, and blah, 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 blah all moral things. And, then, uh, and he says, I remember. And it was sad because he says, okay, the last five, 15 minutes, we're going to, we're going to do the, 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 the bore moment, which is the Bible. Whoa. <laughs> that was my expression. But he won't really say, all right, I'm sorry, but we're going to preach the Bible. We're going to teach the Bible for the 15 minutes. So you can imagine what kind of church or what kind of club is, is this, because it was club. It was so club that they have, they, they, have, they, they have a minister, a person who has in, in charge to the this minister who's a, they call, he's called it like a uh, woe show. The woe show. And, and I have a friend there in that church and I asked her, what does that mean? Well, this person is in charge that the show have to be woe. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the show has to be woe. The show have to be woe. And that name is real. That's, that's real. And he had the show have to so this person has to be how the, 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 the musicians how how look them what is the music they open the the the, 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 the service like an unbelievable song song from the war something like happy you know to put happy people and so the show has to be well you know and they pay for someone to this. Why? Because the pastor thinks that the war is what? It's war. It's all. So what are we going to preach? The war? No. We need, to make, we need to make a show. Huge show. That's the reality in the, a lot of church around the world. But this... I'm going to start with my... But, despite all the attempts to sh destroy it, hide it, burn it, misrepent it, the Bible is still valid today and will always continue to be, because it is the voice of God that is there. And for the Bible to case to exist, God will have to stop to exist. Why? Because it's the Word of God. And that can be dead, dead. In order to be dead, God has to be dead. And what's going to happen? This. Nothing. Never. So we actually happen is the complete opposite. Would you join me? I don't put it in the, in, the, in, the, in the paper, but you can join me to Matthew 24, 35. That is, that is going to happen. What is going to happen for everyone? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will not pass away. That's right. So
So that is, all his creation will come to an end, but his work will never pass because if he is eternal, his work is also. So everything gone pass away, everything. But God is the Omega, right? The Alpha and the Omega. So it is said, it, it is said that a child, when told one of the great stories of the Old Testament, say nostalgic. God was much more exciting than there is a constant t tendency in the church to look back and think that the power of God has diminished and that the golden days are over. Do you think that the days do not think that the days of great promise and great acts are behind us? It is still the same God today. God offers you a blessing as great as those of the saints of the past and, and offers you an adventure as wonderful as those of the heroes of the faith of the past. Our God is a great. It is our God is as great as he has even been. So would you join me to Hebrews 4 verse 12 to 32 please. And I'm going to ask you, you if you can help me to read the Bible. I will be good from the thing. Yes, sir. In Hebrew 4, verse 12 to 13. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him whom we must give account. So the word of God is alive. It is alive. It has pulls, you know. It has pulls. It transforms our life. It's the means by which God made us born again. James 1.18 says, Of his own will he brought us for us for by the word of truth. So it's alive. It's the way of how God saved us. So it is active. It penetrates so deeply that it divides our souls and spirit of joint, joints and of narrow and discerning the thoughts and intention of the heart. When we read it, God shows us our spiritual, physical, and emotional condition, our whole being. That's why it says in verse 13, and no creature is hiding from his side, but all the naked and exposed to the eyes. So, I, 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 we have all hide ourselves from God, just like Adam and Eve. That's never happened to you? That's happened, that's happened to us. I mean, we are Adam and Eve. We are the same. What's going on when we sin? We think that we can hide. So we, got, we, don't, we don't pray. <laughs> yeah, I hide. We got, you don't see me. Yeah. I don't pray so you can't see me. That's, that's, <coughs> that's funny. Because the world says he saw everything, even through our spirit, our soul, our mind, our heart. So we when we hide from him, it's a loose time, right? But, but actually, this this kind of cure doesn't sound or too much great. But in reality, the the God who know everything from us is the best that we can. That, that, that can happen to us because 
in, the, in order to ask to forgive us, he knows. He's waiting that for us to come to him. It doesn't matter what we did. It doesn't matter. He knows. So what can we do? Hide? No. He's waiting to us. Okay, come on. I know what you did. And I knew it before you did. So, what are you going to hide? You must learn what you did and repent. That is a teaching class in some way, right? We just have to be honest with God. So, I've been talking about this because it's very important how we see the Bible. In order to, if you see the Bible in a good way, a biblical way, you're going to approach it. And your faith, what is going to happen with your faith? It's going to grow. That's no, I mean, this is the fruit. You can go to the Bible every day and not grow your faith. Because what's happening? How you grow, how your faith grow? When you have the, your, the Bible in your mind, the Word of God in your mind, so something happens, uh, you are sick, so what are you going to do? Okay, the Bible says, come to the elders, and they're going to pray for you. What are, what are you going to do? Come to the elders. I, I, I'm, I'm not inventing this thing, God. You say in your word that come, this, this happened to me, I have to come to your church, confess my sin. So, it's God who says, hey, you're, you're, you're sick, come and do this. He promised. That doesn't mean that you're going to have help in middle. That means that when God put you in some condition, usually, like James says, is for growing your faith. Right? So, the, so the way we start to feed ourselves when we are born is breast milk. So it contains everything necessary to continue to nurture and help our, our body and mind to develop. It is in the same way the first thing we need, to, we need when we come to Jesus Christ is the Word of God. For, would you join me to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 and 2? Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking, as we were in days, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. So, this is how God wants us to see His word. With an uncontrollable desire, because only through it will we, will we have communion with Him by hearing His voice. Right? Act 20. 34, 32, please. Now I commend you to God and the word of this grace, which is able to build you up and give you the, uh, give you the inheritance, uh, which is able to build you up and give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. So the Bible has the, the Bible has the power to teach us. And the only way to have biblical faith is to spend time in the world of His grace. There is nothing that the believer needs from the world to grow. On the contrary, it is with His words that we can wisely respond to these world's needs. So do you ever see the, when Isabella, my daughter, she saw the milk, I remember she was she, I want it, I want it, I want it. There's nothing else that you want. That's, that's, that's the desire of God with us. Approach it to the Bible in this way. Because the Bible is alive, it's war, it's alive. So what we need every day, like you need your breakfast, your lunch, your meat, is the same. What's going on if you, you, you don't eat for one or two days? Some people... Yeah. <laughs> That's right. 
Because right now you have me thinking, I'm, I have to, I have to, I have to, I need, my body need it, my body need it. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen with the spiritual thing. You can't, the people can not pray. Some people can just not pray. Unfortunately, get the mercy of God is huge with these people. But how they live is uh, unbel like unbeliever. But they say, I'm a Christian. But when you talk about the Bible, it's like, it does happen to me. I have a group, and when we, in the church, we can talk about the Bible. But we went to the houses or something like that. Well, you, you want to talk about God. Because it's your, it's God, it's your, it's, it's, the, 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 it's your desire. So when this happens and you want to talk about something about the Bible, they look at, they look like, are you going to talk about the Bible? Why don't we see a movie? Okay. <laughs> see you in the movie. So, please read Second Timothy 4, verse 2 and 2 to, 2 to 4. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from the listening to the truth and wonder and wander off into myths. So it's important to study the Bible by yourself, but it's also important to hear the, 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 the gospel to, mm -hmm. when, when, in, the, in the church, the preacher. Because the Holy Spirit teaches us in some way that only He, only he knows why use the preacher in this way. But the desire of God is that we come and enjoy the, the preacher. So let's, let's talk about the number two is a means of grace is pray. Someone say once that when we read the Bible, God is speaking to us. But when we pray, we respond to Him according to His word. So we have to pray with faith because we can rest on His promises. Good morning. So how we should pray? Would you join me to James 1? Six and seven, please. How we should play. Okay. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. And the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. So it says, we, faith, is important. What it says that, because some people come to God with no faith, like a religion way. They come to you because, some, because blah, 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 but they don't have faith. So the James says, if you want to talk with God, what well, is important to un that you understand that He exists. That he's hearing, he, he's listening to you. And it's important to us when we come to, to God that we remind that He's listening everything we ask and everything we ask. So, <clears throat> 1 John 5 13 on 50 to 15. These things I've written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence which we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request which we have asked from him. So Joe told us 
that since we have believed in the author Jesus Christ of faith and that he has saved us, us eternally, then there is nothing that we ask him according to his will that he doesn't give it to us. It's like he gives us eternal life. And we ask something, it's like, are you going to ask something else? Do you think the God going to say that? Are you going to ask us, I give you my son, are you going to ask us something else? No. I mean, what, what do you want? No, we don't give that. He says, according to his will, he's going to give it to us. I mean, he loves us. He loves us. So, everything according to his will, he will give it to us. And this is a great promise, but you know, you don't think? So, in Rome 8, 26 and 27, and this is great. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And He who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So, it's interesting that He says that we do not know what to ask for. It's funny. Because sometimes we elaborate some sentence so in this way that you're gonna hear this. Listen. <laughs> you gonna you're gonna have to hear this when I'm gonna say you don't have to you don't know what you are <laughs> That's why the Holy Spirit have to do it for us. And that is amazing. Don't you think? It doesn't matter how you pray. I mean you have to pray according to his will, obviously, according to the war, obviously. But he says, I do it for you. You know what? You know what? You do you do a lot. <laughs> you do a lot. But it's it's important. What is is important about prayer is come honest. Honest. You be honest with my our heart. Okay. And that's what God wants. You just be you. And remember that you are my son. So I got love, I love you. So everything is gonna be okay. Doesn't look like sometimes. But everything is gonna be okay. Number B, what do we pray for? So <clears throat> uh, what do we pray? John 15:10. So the commandments, it's important. It says, you will abide in my love. So we pray, we should pray to live according to his commandments, right? And we have to pray for that. Because in some way, if you, if you, if you practice the commandments, I mean, my brother, you're gonna live according to his will, and he's gonna show you that you. He's gonna show love God and everyone that you love God, and it's important. First John two four says, "Whoever says I know him but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him." So we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't wanna be a liar, right? It's important. The commandments. The other thing what we what we pray for is that to acquire big wisdom. James 1 verse 5. <clears throat> but if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. So 
So we need <coughs> wisdom. Why? For applying the word of God in our lives, right? In order to live like you want it. We need it. We need it. Wisdom. So, and do not enter in temptation is another. We have to pray for this in Matthew 26, 41. And it's important because without prayer, there's no communion. So we do not feed from the source. So we will live hungry and end up looking in the world for food. Farm from God, right? So Matthew 26, 41. Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's right. Yeah. So number three, we're going to see the administration of the sacraments. The sacraments. So the first sacrament we, we know we have is the baptisms. So the last Sunday, Sunday, my <coughs> my children went back baptized and I was able, I'm able to witness how God affirmed my faith in His promises. It was uh, a new experience for me, and it was amazing. I can I can tell you that when this happened to me, I feel like something like I don't know what what was that, but I feel like you are doing my will. Anyway, wow. I, I don't expect this, <laughs> but that's happened. I mean, it was something like, you, you're doing good. <laughs> and, and, it, and it was amazing. So we, we can see Acts, uh, Acts, Acts uh, chapter 2, verse uh, 38. Each of you must return your sins and turn to God. And be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I'm 39. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. This promise is to you and to your children and even to the Gentiles. All who have been called by the Lord our God. Thank you. All right. So that is why every every adult who believes in the gospel must public public publicly affirm his faith in baptism as the sign given by Jesus, right? So every adult who comes when he comes to Jesus, he must show the the the, the world. Uh, I believe her. How did show you? How did this person show this through the baptism? And because he is dying to the to his this world, and if he has children, the logical step will be to baptize them. Not because this will save them, but because the Scripture promised us that if we become part of the church, he please place the parents and the church to guide them to the Christian faith. So the the last Sunday, the pastor ask me if I'm going to teach my kids. And they ask you, and he asks you that you're going to help, my, help them. So you say, yes, I hope so. So it's important. So it's important that, that this, this sacrament. Do you believe that God will give us his word such as the one, uh, one we just read and not carry, carry out? I mean, when I read this, it's that like God put himself in, in some condition that he has to do it. I promise you this. Not because you are a good person, not because nothing. He put himself in this condition when he says, I promise you this. So, what do we have to do with his promise? Believe. Believe. That's what we did the last Sunday. I believe that God gave us kids in my family 
for one reason. You want to save them. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's a big, huge promise. And he gave me, you know, how peace I have when I read this, when I understand this. It's, 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 it's the best gift. One of the best gifts that he has can give us. So, let's see the Matthew 28, 18. Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth is Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I have made you all of to the end of the age. So, do you ever preach the good, the good news? Do you ever preach the gospel to someone? It's, uh, it's not really easy to talk about it, right? Sometimes it's like, uh, what, 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 what should I start? How, how should I start the, 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 the gospel with this, with this person? Is there some different ways? But when we preach, we must to be full of the Holy Spirit. That's important. Full of what the Holy Spirit, what does that mean? Be full of the Holy Spirit, it means be full of His work. Not of the, what, some kind of power I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you in my hand and you're gonna go back. No, don't, not some kind of power that is magical. No. The important when we preach the gospel is the gospel. It's the word of God. That's how God changed the life of the people. So we must we must preach the gospel in the order we have we must to baptize the people. Do I say it right? Okay. So, the gospel is the woe show. <laughs> That's the woe show right there. That's much better than the woe show. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing when it's, do you ever see, do you ever see in, I don't know, in, in live or in the video, when someone preaches the gospel and this person looks like, yeah, I'm a good person. Yeah. Okay, let's see what the Bible says. Do you ever kill? No. Well, the Bible says when you hit, hate someone, you kill. Uh, do you ever lie? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so like, yeah, maybe. So, so, step by step, you're going to see, well, maybe for God, I'm not a very good person. In 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 in, in, in the, the the faith, their faith start change, and some people cry, and you see the amazing work of the Holy Spirit Spirit in life. Would you ever change this for a whole show? Come on, we can do it. The Holy Spirit changed the life of one person. To, to, in order to receive eternal life, what do we need to show? No, we need to preach the gospel. In, in that way, we're going to receive the Holy Spirit. We don't need anything else. So the last one is the Lord's Supper. So, okay, 1 Corinthians 11, 23 and 26. And I know we read every Sunday this. But every time the, the pastor read it, it's special. It's special because show us the sacrifice of God. Will you please uh, read it? For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. 
So how this increase our faith? I would like to hear you. How this increase your faith? How the Lord super increase our faith? She's remembering that he died for you. For your sin. Right. What he did it. Would you? I was going to say he gave us the sacrament so that we can remember what Christ has done. That's right. So he's going to come. Every time you do this, remember, I'm alive. You too. And I'm going to come for you. <laughs> Boom. We have to wait. That's why we have to wait every day. Come, Jesus. So, we have this means of grace. The Word of God, the prayer, and the sacraments. So we can, where, where, where we can apply this? We should apply this in our personal life, but also we must apply it in the church. Visible visible church and that is important it's very important to apply this it's not the same it's, it's special when a brother when you, you when you pray for a, another brother it's, 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 it's amazing how the spirit makes us grow our faith we, we feel love when someone preach the, the word or, or someone ask you how, how are you well, I mean, I mean, a, a little bit stressful. I've been depressed. So, okay, let's let me pray for you, because we have the promise of God who can help us. So, we can apply all this, having full fellowship with the saints. Amen. So, I hope that you can grow in your faith with the word of God.